Daredevil is one of my favourite Marvel heroes, but that wasn't always the case. Growing up, I didn't have access to a bunch of comics, so my favourite heroes tended to be the ones with the best movies and shows. Characters like Spider-Man and the X-Men were massive staples of my childhood. And because I loved their films, I thought I would love their comics, so those were the ones I would end up buying. It wasn't until my teens that I found out how much of a wonderful character Matt Murdock is. Blind lawyer by day, daredevil of Hell's Kitchen by night. So, why was it that I never had any interest in the character as a kid? Well, that's simple. His movie sucked. Daredevil is a notoriously bad movie, often considered to be one of the worst Marvel has to offer. Long before the MCU perfected how it told these stories, the company was still struggling to figure out the formula. The recent Sam Raimi Spider-Man was a huge success, so Marvel's plan was simple. Copy that. Daredevil is easily one of the most forgettable films Marvel has ever released, but you know the old saying, a man who reviews films on YouTube never forgets. Wait, what, what, what was I talking about? But is Daredevil truly the letdown it's often remembered as? I mean, after all, it has a very talented, diverse cast, including Ben Affleck of Batman fame, Jennifer Garner, Jon Favreau, Michael Clark Duncan, Colin Farrell, and others. Yes. Yes, it is. But just saying that clearly isn't enough. I think to truly understand where this film succeeds and fails, we're going to have to go a bit deeper. So, without any further ado, let's take a look at 2003's Daredevil. It's a dark and stormy night. Remy the Rat has fallen on hard times. His arch enemy, some randomly appearing smoke, scares him away as we meet the hero of our story. <laughs> Through a prolonged flashback, we see the accident that blinded the young Matt Murdock, and also how I guess the toxic chemicals somehow gave him bat vision? His father, who's a well-known local boxer, refuses to take a fall for the wheelchair guy from Breaking Bad, which eventually results in his death, leaving his young son a blind orphan. Flash forward an unknown amount of time, and we see Matt in a losing battle against the forces of evil. Not as the titular Daredevil, though, but as a simple lawyer persecuting a criminal with powerful connections. Of course, the crook gets off... <laughs> no. Of course, the crook gets off scot-free, but that won't stop our hero from seeking his own form of justice. That night, Murdoch decides to uh, pose in his room for, for uh, some re reason. This is a really weird montage. Take a look. <laughs> Alright, I changed the music, but even with the original track, it looks goofy. <laughs> Guys, I thought you was a fish. He leaps off this building for absolutely no reason, falls 30 stories, and lands on this window cleaning stand completely unharmed. This is a good point to remind you that Daredevil has no superpowers apart from his, like, echolocation style uh, vision. Uh, no super strength, you know, no... Super shock absorption. <laughs> Daredevil himself looks alright. The costume is certainly instantly recognisable as the character, but being from 2003, it still manages to look cheap and fake. The Charlie Cox series features multiple far more believable and just generally awesome looking outfits. According to IMDb, getting the titular hero's outfit correct was one of the toughest parts of production and took about seven to eight months. And they still got it wrong. An action scene follows where Daredevil takes out a skeevy bar full of thugs in what is perhaps one of the most difficult to follow fight scenes I've ever seen. Or not seen, I guess, since the lights are strobing on and off, the footage shifts between looking normal and some awful low FPS slow-mo. A cheap looking CGI Affleck shows up for one part as we dip in and out of Murdoch's radar vision. But once all of this is done, we're treated to an admittedly really cool sequence in the tube, showing off exactly how that radar vision works and demonstrating how brutal Daredevil really is. This is not your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. It's just a really good lawyer. 
We're introduced to John Favreau's Foggy Nelson, and he does a pretty solid job here as the comic relief and partner in law to Affleck's Murdoch. The scene does a good job at remaining funny while establishing the bond these characters have. Prior to shooting, Ben Affleck made a point of reading every single Daredevil comic as preparation for his role. Although Affleck is a fan of the character, acting him out was such an unpleasant experience that, in November 2006, Affleck stated that he would never reprise the role, having felt, quote, By playing a superhero in Daredevil, I have inoculated myself from ever playing another superhero. <coughs> Batman. The scene takes a change, though, once a mysterious green-eyed girl enters the cafe. What follows is Matt shooting a shot and getting rejected. Fair enough, Matt, we've all been there. Just sit down with your mate and have a coffee. Wait, Matt, what are you doing? No, stop, no, stop following her. Man, that's stalking. Wait a minute, wait a second, take it easy. Dude, you're a lawyer, you know that's assault. I don't like being touched. Wait, wait, rewind a second. Is that a crew member's hand coming up in front of the camera? I'm not sure that's a hand, but that's definitely from the crew. That's not meant to be on the screen. How the hell did this make it to the cinema? Matt proceeds to assault the woman who's defending herself from a creepy guy she doesn't know, who does things no blind man would actually be able to do, who stalked her to this park. My name's Electra Nachos. Electra Nachos? Is anyone else getting hungry? I am. Whoa, what are you doing here? I'm Devil Dare, a legally different character to Marvel's Daredevil. Yeah, I know, I wrote you. Excellent point. Anyways, I'm gonna go get some nachos. Michael Clark Duncan's Kingpin threatens Electra's father, and the performance he gives here and throughout the film manages to be sinister and threatening. Enough credit can't be given to him for the legend he was. The energy he brought to every role is palpable, and it's tragic. We lost him so young at just 54. Rest in peace. Coolio is in this film. He does nothing of importance. We meet Colin Farrell's Bullseye, an Irish leather jacket wearing alcoholic with impeccable aim, an aim he uses to effortlessly win at darts and kill basically anyone who irritates him. He also goes up escalators like he's Jesus on the cross. This film is so stupid. Matt and Electra get to know each other better, a random thug gets beaten up, and Foggy has a serious conversation about the future of their practice. Here's an extract from that scene. Swish. <laughs> hey, I heard you were saying some negative things about my movie. I thought you said you weren't Daredevil. Quiet, foolish mortal. I came to tell you that saying mean things isn't very nice. Oh, is, is that it? Of course not. You're also a week behind on your rent. You should, uh, you should get on top of that. Yeah, yeah, I, I will. I'm, I'm getting paid tomorrow, so I'll sort it down. You've also been putting on a bit of weight recently. No judgments, of course, but you should try and eat healthier. You'll appreciate it in the long run. My voice, my accent is changing. A fancy party leads to the assassination of Nacho's delicious cheese-covered father at the hands of, or, um, aim of Bullseye. Electra stupidly believes Daredevil is responsible for this because, uh, you know, we need more pointless conflict. Coolio is still in this movie, and I promise his plotline goes nowhere. Daredevil, Electra, and Bullseye get into a freeway fight. Bullseye beats Electra. Daredevil beats Bullseye. Rock beats Scissors. This, of course, all leads to a climactic final battle between Matt Murdock and Wilson Fisk. Daredevil and Kingpin trade blows in what is a slow, if tense, fight. Coolio. Daredevil manages to provide some decent thrills, along with some likeable performances and characters. But for every good scene, there's a bad one waiting in the wings. For every actor trying their best, like Affleck, you've got Garner phoning the whole thing in. 
it's far from the worst Marvel has to offer. Things like Blade Trinity and Man-Thing happily preoccupy those slots. Despite all my issues and mixed critical acclaim at the time, the film still managed to be a commercial success, more than doubling its budget. So why then was a sequel never greenlit? Well, it kind of was. In 2005, 20th Century Fox released Elektra, a spin-off starring Jennifer Garner's titular character who first appeared in Daredevil. It was a critical and commercial flop, and this effectively dashed any hopes of a Daredevil 2, not that anyone was really hoping for one. Fans of the character would have to wait more than a decade before they truly got to see a great adaptation on the screen. While the 2015 Netflix Daredevil series is certainly not perfect, it provides a far more cohesive and refined experience than the film ever could. If you want to dive into the character more, Brian Michael Bendis and Frank Miller's runs on the comics are both pretty superb, although uh, there's basically no bad comic run of Daredevil. And the 2015 Charlie Cox series is, of course, another great way to go. They retell a lot of the storylines from those comics. Um, and it's really strong, and of course, with recent events in Hawkeye and Spider-Man No Way Home, it might be an idea to catch up on Daredevil's past. But I can't possibly recommend you make this your first experience with the character. For all the die-hard Marvel fans out there, then you're certain to find enough enjoyment from this film to make your way through it. But not only is it far from the best Marvel film, it's also not even the best live-action Daredevil. Uh, so, Devil Dare, you got anything to add? Nope. Coolio. Next week I'm going to be taking a look at the original Scream movie in preparation for the brand new Scream 5, aka Scream, but I'm going to be looking at Scream, not Scream. So I'm going to be watching Scream, not the new Scream, I'm going to be watching old Scream. So make sure to watch Scream before my Scream video releases, uh, but not the new Scream, you just need to watch the old Scream, but I will be talking about some of the sequels to Scream, and maybe even mention a little bit about Scream. So if you want to watch my Scream videos, you should probably watch Scream, Scream 2, Scream 3, Scream 4, and Scream. But I'm only going to be talking about Scream. Of course, if you liked the video, I'd appreciate if you hit the like button. And of course, if you want to see more, including the screen video, and I'm, don't worry, I'm not doing that bit again, you can hit the subscribe button down below. Uh, I would super appreciate it. But until next time, guys, I hope you have a beautiful day and an even brighter tomorrow. See ya. As I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I take a look at my life and realize there's nothing left. Cause I've been blasting and laughing. So